Ball Change. Shuffle Ball Change. I'm here today with Mary Ellen Grady at the Sky's Limit Courtyard here at Hopkinton Middle School. And I'm getting an impromptu tap dance kind of uh, lesson from Mary Ellen because I understand she brings us into the classroom as well as uh, many other wonderful experiences to uh, have the daily experience of joy in the classroom. <laughs> That's right? the if we don't tip over. <laughs> it's very fun. Very good. <laughs> Come and join us for the dance. <laughs> Hi, Mary Ellen. Um, good to Hi. see you here. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you here, too. Thank you for in the... inviting me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. We're here in the courtyard. Yes. Yeah. And the sky's the limit courtyard. The sky's the limit see? here. <laughs> it's a beautiful sky mm -hmm. in September. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first question to you as a uh, well-known and loved uh, teacher oh, thank you. <laughs> in the town of Hopkinton is, and it's a little playful, yeah. mm -hmm. why are we here? <laughs> Why are we here? Why are we in Hopkinton? Why are we in this world? Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> what could be we, all what, of those, okay, but right. how about with the courtyard? Oh, okay. How did Why we get we, a courtyard? Okay. Why are we in the courtyard? I understand you are uh, instrumental in I, why we have a courtyard here. I think I was. Um, Rita Balboa and I, when I first got the job as assistant principal here, I was the assistant principal for six years, and on the first day, um, I had asked all of my previous principals if we could do something with this space because it was unused, there were, there were a big satellite dish, chain link fence, poison ivy, but there were also some really beautiful rhododendrons that mm -hmm. were around, which I loved. And I used to sit in the corner and eat my lunch with different teachers mm -hmm. depending on you know, what rotation the day was mm -hmm. and would look out and I'd say, we really got to do something with this mm -hmm. and everybody I asked said, oh, it's impossible. There's only one entrance by the boys' room. Mm -hmm and it just seemed like an impossibility. So when I got that chance to be somebody with a little bit of power, mm -hmm. I decided to ask um, Alan Keller, who was the principal I worked under, um, and he said, sure, give it a try. Mm -hmm. And um, Rita Balboa and I had just come from a conference together, and we had seen what was like a, just stones in a smaller area than this with a couple picnic benches, and you know, we said we could start like that. We could do. We could at least do that. But I had bigger visions, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got people from the entire community involved, um, drawing um, pictures for us, doing mm -hmm. the architecture for us. Everything was donated, and people believed in it and thought this this could be a wonderful space. Mm -hmm. Our school is getting smaller because our st we have our population growing, yes. and this really adds an outdoor classroom space. So when you asked if I um, would be interviewed, this mm -hmm. was to me the perfect space mm -hmm. because it's the place I'm most proud of in the mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the most beautiful place mm -hmm. in the school. And I love to be outdoors. Yes. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just really, beautiful here. The yeah, stonework, there are mm -hmm. names yeah. of donors. So, probably. All, of do all donors mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and there are the, trees yep, and, and grass. The, the stage area uh, the stage, is dedicated yeah. to um, Shane DeRoche, a student of ours that passed mm -hmm. away a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So, it has oh. really sentimental value. That's right. And, um, you know, it, it almost came like. It was dying down the interest in it, but when that happened, it really brought people together because they could mm -hmm. do something. They could do something that was tangible. Yes. And yeah. you have a place here where his mother can come, where mm -hmm. his family can come, and they have come. Mm -hmm. um, and the kids who realize how important this was. And if you walk around the bricks, you'll see many of them are. Um, you know, dedicated to the DeRoche family mm. and Shane and the wonderful person he was. Mm -hmm. so, what a special place. Yeah, it uh, is. It's a spiritual place. Yes. You know? And um, how many years did this take to materialize? I, I'm, I'm so bad with math. Well, um, you could but yeah, I think, I think it's like three years. It three took years? us from, from beginning to yeah. end. It was, it was a long time, you know, before any, uh, where even, you know, there was a movement made because you mm -hmm. had to go through school committee and explain it to them. You had to have everything approved. Mm -hmm. You had to have buildings and ground. The town came in. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it than you think. I right. thought we could just open the door and come uh, out and cut the could... grass, you know, and that wasn't it. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but, it, but it is 
it's everything that I thought yeah. it could be, wow. and I know it can be more than even this, and mm -hmm. I'm sure it will be. Well, congratulations, and thank you. Congratulations on the of to the entire community because that's, right. that's yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just an idea for me, mm -hmm. but the people that you know came in were unbelievable, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. the, they they are the ones who deserve the thank you for working mm -hmm. so hard and yes. you know bringing the money in that was so badly needed and right. You know, well, thank you to the community yeah. and to the little seed of idea yeah, that well, was yeah. the catalyst yeah. by you, mm -hmm. really. And I think uh, from the stories you tell, that <laughs> happens often that you have that what if idea so. and <laughs> yeah. you put it out mm -hmm. there and, and then it I try manifests. To. It happens. Yeah. And I understand yeah. there are classes that take place here. Yep, we have classes that come out here um, on you know on a beautiful day like this. It's it's a time you want to bring your kids mm -hmm. out. So when they're reading or they're um, sharing stories mm -hmm. um, or they're listening to poetry or mm -hmm. writing poetry, mm -hmm. what would inspire you more than being outdoors? Right. And it's a contained area that's really safe for kids to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. um, so you know when we have these beautiful, these are the coolest things um, I think. Uh, that that are the tables that turn into desks. Yeah. So you, it's wow. it's very easy to make it a classroom. You can just move hmm. them over, and That's we have great. the um, pergola and the the um, staging Wonderful area stage. where yeah, yeah, and the kids have put on hmm. plays up there. Mm -hmm. I've been out th with them. I when we did a Midsummer's Night Dream, the English teachers brought their eighth graders out there to put on parts of the play. So that was fun. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Yes. Wow. And the sixth grade when they had the elder tea at the end oh, of the yeah. year, mm -hmm. they bring people out here too. Mm -hmm. So there's you know, there's a lot of times you can use it. And in New England, with the way the climate is, we can use it much more than we used to, mm -hmm. you know, like right. the, I think our seasons are elongated, you yeah. know, it, it yeah. seems like we have, we have uh, more of, more of a, of a um, winter, but we also have much more of a summer mm -hmm. on both ends of it. So well, it's nice it's to have. Wonderful. Good yeah. work. Thanks. And, uh, oh, I have more questions, okay. but since uh, we started being uh, playful with the question, okay. I'll put out there and uh, more, more deeply, why okay. do you think we're here? Why do you're I a think teacher, we're here? you're a grandmother, okay. Okay. you have overcome obstacles in your okay. life. Okay. I, I, Anything you want for like I, a one I or two minutes. I know why we're here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe um, that we are here to bring joy to other people. Mm -hmm. um, there are two things that I think are essential in life, and I think that um, and that bring us together commonly, and that is every person I've ever met wants to be loved mm -hmm. by even one person, mm -hmm. and that's all they need. And every person I've ever met needs to hear their voice heard mm -hmm. and I think that when you give an opportunity for the shyest or sometimes the loudest mm -hmm. you know to have their voice heard and to really genuinely pay attention and see what's lovable about mm -hmm. an individual mm -hmm. you have your, your your heart fills with joy mm -hmm. and um, I think that's that to me you're here to bring joy to others that mm -hmm. that's your job mm -hmm. you're supposed to um, somehow you know bring something every every single morning and every time I get a new group of homeroom kids um, during the moment we have a moment of silence mm -hmm. after the pledge and um, the national anthem and I say you know for the moment of silence for the purpose of prayer and meditation and I ask everybody to please try their hardest do their best but most importantly be kind to each person they meet that day mm -hmm. And I know kids that I had many years ago say it silently because they tell me they say it silently mm. in their homeroom because mm -hmm. it's not said anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But that's how I grew up and that's what I learned. And that's mm -hmm. what my mom told me, you know, every day, try your hardest, do your best and be mm -hmm. kind to every person you meet. So it's a mantra that I have. And I think that's why we're here. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you see that uh, having impact? I think there's a ripple effect with everything that you do and I can mm -hmm. see I just saw a couple of my girls from last year and they ran and hugged me and I you know it's just such it's like to get to know a, a student at this age when they're in the eighth grade they're right on the edge of childhood going mm -hmm. into being the adult they're going to be mm -hmm. and I, I can see who they are mm -hmm. and um, one of my gifts that I that I believe I've been given is to see greatness in others and mm -hmm. I can see what their potential is and what they can do and I hope they listen to what I tell them that's mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. so well that is a very important gift 
Uh, and um, I'm glad that you shared that as part of your interview oh, today. You. And I heard when you also talk about experiencing joy, uh, you why just this morning where you were tap dancing with your students, is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How often because does that happen? <laughs> maybe more, do often it more, more often than it should. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, we have, we do know that um, for the brain to keep, keep, you know, learning and keep at its most active, mm. the amygdala lights up when you physically move. So we had been sitting for a while and they're writing essays and I thought, okay, that's enough. We mm. need to get up and I, so I did a little shuffle ball change with uh, them and uh -huh. they, they were pretty good, you uh -huh. know. We did a couple twirls and then we did the <laughs> shuffle ball change and I said, now you can sit down. Uh -huh. Your, your brains are all lit up again. So, You're right. you know, yeah. it's, it's. It's not only um, a, a physical break, but a break for fun. And mm -hmm. any time that you can laugh, oh my God, laugh! You know, mm -hmm. it's do, it doesn't come often enough in life. So, mm -hmm. laugh every minute you can, and mm. they laugh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, um, that also is great philosophy, and I see that. Uh, in what I know of you, the appreciation of humor, uh, but you've had some serious jobs in, in life and being a, a longtime teacher mm -hmm. and also uh, an administrator, mm -hmm. a vice mm -hmm. principal yep. here. Um, how, how, do you, how did you get started in teaching, going back to childhood? Okay. Uh, what got you interested? Something um, <laughs> that probably shouldn't have. I hated school, ah. um, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I. Um, I did not do well in school. It wasn't until I was a senior in high school that they um, realized that I was dyslexic. Mm -hmm. Because um, when I was growing up, I went to Catholic schools, which were wonderful. Yeah. But um, people didn't know about learning disabilities like they do today. Mm -hmm. So it was never diagnosed until I was a freshman in college. Wow. And at that time, the professor said to me, who's the clown who's you know doing the, the tests wrong? And it was me, mm -hmm. um, and I was doing everything that I could do. Um, and he called me up, and I had to do all these things in front of the whole group. And I realized, you know, he said to me, "How have you gotten here?" And I said, "I don't know." I said, and and then I realized how I had gotten there. I had two parents, Kitty and Buzz Syriac, who would not let me ever give up and believe that I mm -hmm. believed in me so much, and. You know that so when I decided I would never let let a bad day happen in my classroom, and I'm I'm hoping it never has or never does, because I think the time that you know, like I think the time that we have kids in our room are so important. You have them for like an hour, and that's the, an hour a day isn't enough for anybody. But when they're in there, I happen to know that that's the best part of some people's day. Mm -hmm. I had a girl mm -hmm. years ago, Allison LaRiviere at Blackstone Millville High School, and Allison is, is grown and she's probably in her late 40s now, mm -hmm. but um, she used to sit with me every day after school and I said, Allison, you know, finally in senior year, for four years she would sit and work with me and she'd just do her homework and I'd correct papers and we'd chit chat. And um, I learned that Allison's life was not good at all at home. And she told me that this was the best part of her day. Mm -hmm. And I had everything that I could do not to let the tears fall down because I thought, wow, my, for my kids, the best part of their day is coming home. And these are my kids in school, too. You mm -hmm. know, like I call them my kids. Um, and I want this to be the best part of their day. Um, that hour that they have with me or whatever encounter we have. Like as I walked through a door, I asked, you know, I asked, please give me the strength to, to be kind with every, every movement I have, mm -hmm. every word I speak, every eye contact I make. So I think that's like, it's funny that I became a teacher, but maybe not so funny, you mm -hmm. know, um, because I, I love what I do mm -hmm. and I get up with joy. I'm mm -hmm. tired many mornings, <laughs> yeah, sure. but I, but I do, I walk in and I get yeah. up with joy to see the kids Whoa. in front of me. So uh -huh. it's nice. Well, that's very inspiring and, uh, you know, meaningful that you, you yourself struggled mm -hmm. with uh, learning disability with dyslexia. And I think mm -hmm. I can have more empathy with children mm -hmm. and I also know I, I know that disappointment of getting back a really bad grade mm -hmm. and I yeah. 
tell them, you know, we can we can do something with this. Yeah. Believe me, I, I know what this feels like. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel this, mm -hmm. but I know that we can. I knew because I worked it out myself. Mm -hmm. So I know that they can work it out for themselves, too. And, and it takes a lot of people helping you out. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. a lot of people that will give you that second chance. And I was given that second and third and 50th chance. And mm. I'm so glad I was. And I'm so glad the people in my life let me do that. Right. So. And uh, getting into college also was part of this story. Yeah. Right? Um, I didn't get into any colleges except for Worcester State. And um, Worcester State, I, I, you know, I had to drive and I didn't have a car. So I had to go find somebody from Framingham that would drive with me. And I, I felt that, you know, I really wanted to go to Framingham State. It wasn't like it was Harvard University. I wanted to go to Framingham State. And then mm -hmm. that was my hometown school. And I knew it was a great school for teachers. I mm -hmm. knew it was one of the best teacher colleges around. So I didn't realize there were rules and things. So I made a call to the secretary of the president of the college. And I asked if I could have an appointment with him. So she asked my name, and she called me at the time, you know, Miss Syriac, and I, and I came in, and then I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, like, I'm not sure why you're here. And I said, I, I really want to go here. And I got into Fra Worcester State, but I want to go to Framingham State, and I, I want to know if you can help me with that. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're not accepting anybody else, and we're, we're not accepting transfer students. It was a big year that they had a lot of kids going to Framingham mm -hmm. State. And it was affordable, so a lot of people like me, that was the place you could go. Right. Um, so he said to me, I'll, if you can get straight A's, if you can get a 4.0 average, you come back and see me. Wow. And I did. Wow. And I got in. Uh -huh. So That's amazing. That was my second semester was at um, Framingham State. Uh -huh. and You got you where know, you wanted I got to go. A, yes. You made it happen. Yeah. Once again. And, I worked really, really <laughs> yes, hard, and yes. I had a lot, a lot of help, you know, uh -huh. but but right. it was something I wanted so badly that mm -hmm. I think when you set your mind to something, even if it seems impossible, you've got to surround yourself with the people that can help you and surround yourself with the mindset that you can get there. Mm -hmm. might not be on your terms, but you can get there, mm. you know, so. Well, I hear a lot of inspiring stories from you in, <laughs> in uh, a good part of your interview already. Oh, and there, I'm, there's so much more. <laughs> I know to you uh, beyond teaching, but perhaps you will. You are a teacher for mm -hmm. us all as uh, as well. So I hope you make a book or a teaching series well, someday I'm, I'm for educators. I'm hoping, I'm, I am hoping to write some books. Good. I, you know, yeah, I understand when, you like to write. I love to write. I wrote for um, the Milford Daily News oh, for five uh -huh. years. I had my own column. What was um, that about? Anything I wanted to write. Anything. About. <laughs> yes. I had sent. I had some really talented students in school, and I sent an envelope with their essays, and I also stuck in a couple of mine. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call, and um, the girl said, "Your students, are, they're really good writers, but we're interested in what you wrote." Mm -hmm. And I thought, "Oh, they're just funny, silly little things." And she said, "We really like it. Would you be interested in that?" And I said. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? That's great. I said, what, what do you want me to write about? And she said, anything you Whatever want. You so want. I wrote for five years, every week, about anything I wanted. What was your the I, title? I wrote, um, it, it was, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, my goodness. Was it Tapestry? Or I, I forget. Well, it that was, covers yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, like, topics, Because right? that was one of my favorite songs. Uh -huh. um, and I thought my life has been a tapestry. Huh. You know, there's yeah. so many different things in it. So. Mm -hmm. um, and I, now you're working on writing. Uh, I'm writing a uh I've been writing for a long time, and I, and it and I really do want to do this because I think it would be very helpful to all people. I have a daughter who um, suffers from bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. and um, there you know there was a lot of shame. She mm -hmm. you know she's grown up and has a family, and mm -hmm. you know is is a teacher now, and and things are wonderful. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of shame in the time that mm -hmm. she was going through it, and I really couldn't talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were people were afraid they'd catch it, mm -hmm. and you were always wondering, are your friends your friends? It was it was hard. Yeah. So I started immediately like keeping a journal on what went through, and then I started writing the book, and then I thought to myself, how cool this would be, to have my daughter's voice in this also. Mm 
right. because she, yeah. you know, she would re remembered all the things right. that, that she went through. Well. And I thought how interesting it would be to see, you know, my story is my truth of what mm -hmm. happened and her story would be her truth of what happened. Mm -hmm. And it would be helpful to parents and children that are going through that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm also working on a really important book about um, finding starfish at Sagamore Beach when uh, w with my granddaughter Charlotte. There was one day that we How went down there. Um, she was five at the five, time. Yep. She's seven now. But um, I've gone to Sagamore Beach my whole life, and it's like a second home to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are times when sand dollars come, come mm -hmm. and, it, you know, the ocean changes, and it's so cool. And they always had sand dollars when I was a little girl, and they were no sand dollars. And one year we had sand dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, there were starfish. I remember the year of the starfish, mm -hmm. and that was like phenomenal. Wow. And that summer, we went down that day, and it was just the two of us, hand in hand with our buckets, and we're on the sandbar. And I said, Charlotte, that's a starfish. I haven't seen a starfish in a year. So, and there were thousands of huh. them. It was, it was, and then three days later, there was none. Wow. And it, it's huh. you know so I yeah, thought that yeah. would be a great story about our mm -hmm. adventure and you know bringing her brothers down to see the starfish mm -hmm. and so I've started that but I wanted to illustrate it also so I like to draw her I'm not great but I mm -hmm. do like to draw so I'd like to do it and I wanted to give it to her for a Christmas present but I was I'm just busy <laughs> so yes it will be done <laughs> it will be done so. well that sounds like yeah. a wonderful story and and mm -hmm. then quickly can you tell the story about Toto oh Toto <laughs> <laughs> so when when my kids were little I would <laughs> regale them with stories um, that I would make up um, because they, you're a natural storyteller <laughs> I, I understand guess so. I guess so <laughs> so we had a cocker spaniel named Toto and Toto had to go to have surgery and I didn't want to upset the kids so I told them that I had applied for um, a Mighty Dog cruise for the dog to go on, <laughs> and that she was going to go on this wonderful, you know, 10-day vacation with all expenses paid. Mm -hmm. And I, so every day the the story about Toto got a little <laughs> bit stronger, and they would eat uh -huh. their breakfast with their mouths having, <laughs> hanging open, and just you know, c couldn't imagine Toto. So mm -hmm. when I did bring Toto home from the from the animal hospital, I had a lovely lay around her neck, so it looked like she had returned from vacation. Well, and it took many years for them not to believe that story. So well, that's a great story, yeah. and it reflects uh, the great uh, resource of imagination that you draw. Well, on I think in your it, life. I, I mean, isn't imagination the best thing we have? It's very important. You know, like I, I think to myself, I wish everybody had mm -hmm. the kind of imagination I seem to have, because mm -hmm. I've never bored waiting in mm -hmm. line or in a grocery store <laughs> or waiting in a car because I've got stories going on about everybody oh, around me. Yeah. You know, it's just oh, you so should fun. be hired for that service <laughs> you know? as well. I mean, I could do that. I uh -huh. can definitely do that. You know, it doesn't. Oh. I'm never bored. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I've got well. something to think about. And you so. also make things happen with that imagination of yours. I try to. <laughs> and you have a spiritual as well as a humorous mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, imaginative, fa uh, fast mind in a way that mm -hmm. makes things happen. But you also have a practice of mindfulness. And, I, and we only yes, have I a do. few minutes okay. left. I was wondering yeah. if you could talk a little bit sure. about how you got involved in that and show mm -hmm. me how to practice mindfulness. Absolutely. I'll show you a real quick one. You can do it anywhere. So I got in mindfulness because of, there were a lot of reasons. I took a course um, with my assistant um, principal, Ian Bimbenek, and we went through it. And we it was good, and we liked it. And I practiced, and then I got away from it. Because, you know, if you don't practice all the time, you kind of get away from things. And mindfulness to you means very quickly? It, um, it means, it, it means connection. Um, it means being in the moment. It means, un, like, when you're with a child, really being with that child. Um, when I'm with my mother, who I'm going after here to see, who's dealing um, with Alzheimer's. Yeah, my mother has Alzheimer's, so mm -hmm. I used to get very sad going in, and mm -hmm. that's when I really had to find something else. I'm a prayer, mm -hmm. so I pray a lot, but not everything was working for me, and um, I went to a three-day um, conference at Harvard University on mindfulness where they had the gurus from all over the world mm -hmm. come and it was basically three days with 87 other people of silence um, wow. and, and really That's just a long practice. time of silence. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough for mm -hmm. us because I think we're constantly you know in in the world going all the time. Um, and, and it brings peace would you say? I, it, it brings great peace. It's mm -hmm. just it you know, like you think about, I've brought it to my 
children for their children. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I watch, I, I do a lot of observing and I see people taking pictures of their children at events where they should just be watching their children mm -hmm. at events. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm like, when are you going to watch that? You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> like, when, yeah. when is that any good? Yeah. And and why don't you just pay attention and look at, you know, get get every sense that you can right then. Right. And yeah. I think with mindfulness, that's what it is. It's reminding yourself to be present all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I use that um, wherever I go. I use it in my classroom. I practice in, in classroom and kids do it with me every day. So this is, this is a simple one. I'm going to teach you one. Right. This is do you simply, think we can do it we can in two do, minutes? We can, we can do it and in two be minutes. very present. Yeah, because it's 15 <laughs> seconds. All right. All right. So <laughs> you, you put your feet um, firmly on the floor mm -hmm. and this is called palms up, roll your shoulders back so you're comfortable, mm -hmm. head to the heavens and simply open your palms. Um, our, we are, by nature, when you open your palms, that means you want to give something or you want to get something back. Mm -hmm. And we are just going to listen to the chime and I want you just to breathe and do nothing. Listen to the sounds around you, what you hear, mm -hmm. um, but con or you can just listen to your breath. With it's eyes a, open or closed? I lower my eyes mm -hmm. or close them. I close them. Mm -hmm. um, kids usually lower because they're, they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, so the chime, once you stop hearing the chime, you just raise your hand and see if you feel any different. Mm -hmm. Whoops, sorry. I raised mine a okay. little faster. Okay. <laughs> I, I have it in my hand, and when you're, you're attuned uh, to it, you hear it, I think, yeah, more yeah. vividly. But how did you feel after oh, Cheryl? A little like I was not uh, in the same shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little gone, yeah. I guess. And so 15 seconds. Think if 15 seconds can, can do that mm -hmm. to you. Can you work yourself up to a minute? Do you deserve three minutes a day? Um, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, and we can do it anywhere. Nobody has to know you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You can just do it on your own. and. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a wonderful tool um, is, to yeah. share with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of being mindful, uh, <laughs> our time has come to an end. Well, and thank so, you so much for talking with oh, me and listening to me. Yes. I guess. <laughs> and thank you for uh, so much that you shared in sure. so short a time. Sure. And I wish you a wonderful year. And oh, thank you. Uh, best wishes with all the I'm projects. I'm sure I'm going to have a wonderful year. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are too. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, we're bringing Sam Harris and I, who has been my inspiration, we're bringing um, mindfulness to the schools. We're hoping great. we have a proposal to bring it to parents. So, wonderful. Yeah, we're oh, going to open well. it up to parents and see if people want to come and practice. Well, so. I look forward to hearing all more. Right. So. Maybe you'll join us, Cheryl. Maybe I will join you. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So thank you so much sure. again. Sure. Thank you so much.